In this session, we're going to look at creating a sort of artistic, sketched, I guess you could say chiseled or beveled granite type effect that we could use in our text and also in our designs. We're going to keep this session kind of simple, but you could really go a lot more detailed with it. You know, we want to be able to design at the level that we see going on with the retail, and I've said this again and again and again, and we want to be able to do that easily, working effectively with our graphics application, and really creating this type of a look could be done very easily. I mean, if you vectored out these wings and used some of the techniques that we're going to demonstrate in this video, you'd be able to create a design like this very easily without spending 15 or 20 hours illustrating everything and get a really good, realistic, artistic look with that effect. But in this session, we're just going to experiment with some text and a very simple tribal element here. And then you'll see how you could take that and play that in to something as detailed as even this here. To get started here, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and set up my text. And I'll go here and just go into my document for that. I'm going to type in the word victorious. I'll tar start with a capital V. And I'll use a capital S also. Go ahead and enlarge that. And I'll go ahead and set this up as a font portaculean. You can find this on www.dafont.com. And it's a free font that you can download. And once again, that's D-A-F-O-N-T, dafont.com. Go ahead and right click on this and I'll select convert to curves. Then once that's set convert to curves, you can see that it's still grouped here. I want to ungroup this. Click off and I'll go ahead and click on this, right click and select break curve apart and I'll do the same thing here. Break curve apart. Now lasso all the lowercase letters and I'll just go ahead and combine those. Now in the V here, I can see I've got an issue that I want to deal with. There's this notch here coming out and I want to go ahead and get rid of that. So I'll come over here to my shape tool and just lasso all of that go ahead and delete it. I can see that this is just a little bit unsmooth there, but that'll be fine if I just tweak that a little bit. What I'm just going to do is I'm going to take my V and my S, hold down shift, select both of them, and then enlarge those just a little bit to give it some more effect in my text logo or text design here. And I'll take both of these and I'll just hold down shift again, hit T key to make sure they're both aligned correctly. Now, with that being said, like that, I'm looking at this and saying, you know, I'd like to bring this V down probably a little bit and this S here. So I'm just going to select both. And I'll just click down with my arrow key so I like where they are, which would be right about there. Go ahead and lasso everything here and select Combine. Come over here to my Interactive Tools, and I'll come down to the envelope. That'll give me the Shape Tool for the envelope. I'll lasso these two nodes here in the middle, delete those. Lasso again here at the bottom, select both of these, hold down control, and bring this down straight. And then I'll go ahead and left click, hold down, and arch here at the bottom, and then I'll do the same thing up here at the top. Now once that's done, the next thing I want to do is create some cool elements here, but I want to go ahead and show you something with the bevel here at this point. I'm going to change this to a gray fill. I'll go ahead and duplicate this just so I've got a backup up here. I'm going to go to Window, and I'm going to go to Dockers, and I'm going to go to Bevel here. And we'll be using this in the tutorial. Now, I've actually got it right here. Now, if I go ahead and click Apply, you can see my Bevel effect here. And that'll be critical in creating the sketched effect for the text. The reason being because if it's just flat text, then giving it some shading and highlighting that would make it have a sketched look isn't really going to work on just flat text. So that's why we want to use the Bevel here. Now the next thing I might want to do is actually create a tribal or some type of graphic or decoration here at the bottom. And do that very easily. I'm going to go ahead and get a square or a rectangle. I really like to work with shapes when I'm illustrating and designing. It just makes it so much easier. Go ahead and rotate that. Just like you can see right there. And I'll change the size of that a little bit. And then I can take this and I can fill that with a gray and I can apply the bevel on that. And I can take this and I can come over here to my smear tool. I'll make that quite a bit bigger, holding down shift and moving my mouse. And just take and drag this out and start to create a decorative type of tribal look here, as you can see right there. Then I'll go ahead and just start working with this tool. I'm going to bring, shift this down a little bit and I'm just going to arch these in. You can see I'm just giving these kind of like an arched edge to them right there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down another element here. So I'll just start pulling here off to one side and I can shift and bring this down smaller again and start pushing this in. 
and I can start grabbing another piece here. And instead of drawing really like, you know, the tribal effects, I can just smooth this in like this and get a really nice tribal shape. And then work it in kind of like play. Now, sometimes these will deselect. All you need to do is just go ahead and get your pick tool and select these again and go back and start working with that. And I'll pull this down this way here. I can change this size again here and then pull that out until it's smooth. And you can see the type of look that I'm getting here. And I can smooth this in. Now, this makes it really nice for working with this because, you know, you don't have to be an illustrator. You can kind of like, you know, mold your shapes as opposed to trying to create them with vector. I'll go ahead and get the pointy smear here and bring this off this way there. Now, I could do some more work with this and really shape this in. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'll go ahead and wrap here with this. But you can see how I would set that up. And I can actually bring this up in here and just kind of rotate it into where I'd like to see it in my design for my effect. Make that a little bit bigger if I want to, etc. Go ahead and duplicate this over here and then I'll mirror that. Bring that over to this side here. And I've got that element set up there. Now the next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and get my ellipse tool. And I'll just create a circle here. And I'll go ahead and fill that with the gray also and hit apply. You can see how nice this works with the bevel built into the shapes. And I'll go and get my smear tool here. I'm going to want a pointy smear. I'm going to make this quite a bit bigger. And then I'll just go ahead and just pull this right straight down to make that pointed round shape going down that I had in the other session there. Now, if this comes off out of balance, I can just rotate this and straighten that out if it's not on a straight line. And these two here, now I can start working with these actually independently kind of give them a little bit of a different look from each other I'll go ahead and make this smaller and just smooth this area here out a little bit and then i'll do the same thing over here just where i see that i need that roundness in there to make that work a little bit better so now i've got that effect set up in here all i'll do is go ahead and select all this here and i'll go ahead and group that make sure it's centered hold down shift and hit the c key Make sure all that's centered. Now, what I want to do at this point, because I've completed the actual design very quickly and easily, is I want to set this up with a sketched look. Now, I can change on these. I'll go ahead and ungroup everything here. Make sure this is all ungrouped. I can change colors here if I want to do a lighter effect, as you can see here. Or I can change the settings that are in the bevel tool if I want my shading to be in a different direction. See if I slide this direction here and hit apply, that'll change that. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing here. Hit direction here and we'll change that to say 119, hit apply. And you can see how that looks like it's now coming from two different angles in the shading there. Next thing I'll do is go ahead and duplicate this, make a keep a backup of it. I want to take any outline that I've got on there off. I'm going to go to bitmaps, I'm going to go to convert to bitmap. I'm going to go with grayscale, 300 dpi, transparent background, that's fine, and select OK. Let that process. Go ahead and copy this. Paste it back in. Go to Effects, Transform, and Invert. We'll zoom in here so we can see what's going on. Then I'm going to go to my transparency here, and I'm going to set that to a uniform set to color dodge. Select OK and set that to 100%. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to bitmaps. Creative, and I'm going to go down here to Scatter. I'm going to click on Preview. That's set to 2. And we can see that there. Now, if I collapse this and hit Preview, you'll see that here. And that's starting to build my sketch effect. And I can make that a little bit stronger if I wanted to. And select OK. Now we can see a nice pencil-looking sketch effect line built in around the graphic. The next thing I'll do is go ahead and duplicate this again because I want to keep backups as I work along so I can get to things. I'll go here and go bitmap and I'll go convert to bitmap and I'll select OK at 300 dpi. And then with that done, I'm simply going to go ahead and go to my tone curve. So I'm going to do to effects, adjust, and tone curve. And I'm going to set this to straight. I'm just going to make these lines darker. So I'll pull this down this way and then hit on preview. And you can see that that's getting darker now. I'm going to select OK. I want to zoom in here and take a look. That's got a real nice pencil look to it. I'm going to go to bitmaps, blur, and Gaussian blur just to soft that up a little bit. Probably about 1.1 pixels. There, now I've got that nice pencil look in there for the outlines. 
Next thing I want to do is go back here to the duplicate I made, and I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this again and get back to my original image. And here I'm going to go to bitmaps, and I'm going to go to artistic strokes, and I'm going to come down here to wave paper, click on preview, and we'll take a look at that. And you can see the effect we're going to start getting there. So I'm going to select OK. And then here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to effects, adjust, and tone curve again. I'm going to go back to straight, and then I'm just going to bring this all the way over and hit preview here. And see that we're getting just our shading there, as you can see. And I can dial that in also, so we're getting more or less of it, of the effect. I think I like that right about there, and I'll select OK. Go ahead and take this, duplicate it over here, lasso both of these, hit the C and the E key, and then I'll take my text here and I'll go to, I want to make sure I've got one of those selected, not both. And I'll go to transparency and here I'm going to go with uniform and I'm going to select subtract and I'm going to slide this all the way back. And now we can see that effect built in there. It kind of looks like a sketch. Next thing to do is select both of these again. We'll go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap, 300 dpi grayscale, select OK. Now here if I want to, I can make some adjustments. I can go to Effects, Adjust, and Tone Curve again. And I could make this a little bit darker. As you can see right there. Select OK. Now here what I want to do is go ahead and set up my Cracked effect on that. So I'll go ahead and select my Beveled Objects. Now here I'll need to go through and right click and select Break Apart to get back to the Pure Vector. Break bevel apart and just right click on these break bevel apart and the same thing here, break bevel apart. And just go ahead and select these and delete them. I'll select everything here again and then I'll come back and go to combine. Set this to a gray, kind of like what you see here. I'm going to bring this over on top of this image. Everything's going to center up just fine. So we'll select everything, hit the C and the E key. Then we'll zoom in here, and all I'll need to do to create my cracked effect for this is actually go to my advanced t-shirts fashion factory and bring in a nice cracked texture that I can put on top of that. I'll go to my system textures, and I'll come over here to page three. Actually, I think this one works pretty good, the dry dirt field. So I'll go ahead and double click that, apply texture as transparency. And there you can see the effect built in. Now I can change that to a black to make it darker. But there's a nice sketch effect with the cracks and everything built into it. And literally, you could tweak this in and dial it in even more by doing some different things with it and working with it. Like I can take the top that I just put on here. I can go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap, make sure I've got a transparent background. And just to soften this up into a sketch look, I'll go to bitmaps. And then I'll go to Creative, and then I'll go to Scattered here also. And I'll change that to say 2 Preview. And 2 might not be enough, we'll go to 3. Because you don't want to lose all the detail in there. Exactly, there you go, there's your 3. Then take this bitmap, and then we can go to Blur, Gaussian Blur, Preview 1 Pixel. And we soften that up quite a bit. And we can see that effect. Now I can go ahead and take everything that's here. Again, bitmaps, convert to bitmaps, OK. And run it through a tone curve to dial in even more. I'll go effects, adjust, tone curve. And we got a tutorial on the site about the tone curve that explains everything about it under the Simple Steps Raster training. But you could make an effect like this and just pull the dark out and leave it lighter, as you can see there. Or you can go reset. And you could pull it down and make it darker and really dial in the type of look you're looking for or the intensity you want with the shading working with the tone curve tool. And I can come up here and pull this this way a little bit and select OK and there we can see that effect. So very easy to set up as you can see there and create this type of look that you would get when working for designs or looks that we see going on with things in the retail shelf, as long as you know what tools to use and how to use them in Corel Draw, we can get these looks very easily and very effectively, literally in a matter of minutes. So we'll go ahead and wrap here, relating to our chiseled or beveled, distressed 
I guess you could say, hand-drawn artistic sketch look in Corel Draw for our fashion looks. And like I said, we'll go ahead and wrap here. And we'll see you in our next video.